Hi, this video shows a simulation of the classical transposition flap being done. It will show how the defect is triangulated, how the flap is marked including the pivot point, the line of greatest tension or maximal tension and how the flap is being transposed. We shall be seeing how the classical transposition flap as we have seen in the video is being done. First we will consider a defect, an irregular defect about size 2 cm diameter. We, sh we shall have to first triangulate the defect keeping in mind the principles that we have learned. This defect has the apex pointing downwards towards us and the base pointing upwards. The sides are A, B and the apex is C. Now we have selected the side of the flap as the side adjacent to BC. So we shall now extend the line BC away from the base. Now we need to determine the pivot point D. For that we measure the base AB and parallel to AB from the point C we mark the same distance equal to AB. That will be the pivot point D. From the pivot point D we mark a line parallel to the line that we have drawn extended from CB. Now this will represent the lateral edge of the transposition flap. Keeping the pivot point D as constant, we measure the distance D to A. This is going to be the, point, the line of greatest tension or line of maximum tension. This is marked and this is transposed gently to the line extended from CB. That will be the point E. And then the same thing is continued and the same line of maximum tension is extended to cut the line that we have drawn from the point D. It will mark the point F. Now this marking from B to E and E to F and D to F are done. Remember the C D line should not be marked. Now C, E, F, D is the flap. Now we will excise the triangle that we have formed A, B and C. So this is going to be the triangulated defect for which the flap is going to be transposed. The debridement must be clear and here since there is a pink foam underneath the debridement must go up to the pink foam. The triangulation is completed and the triangular defect ABC has been created. Now the planned flap CEFD is now raised. The incision is made first extending the defect that is CE then the leading edge of the flap EF is incised the same depth is performed. If it is a skin flap, it goes down to the fascia. If it is going to be a fascia cutaneous flap, the incision must go through the fascia and include the fascia in the under surface of the flap. Now the remaining incision is made. That is F and D are joined. Now the flap has been raised. The flap is now transposed to the defect and the leading edge EF will be sutured to the edge AB. Please note the bunching up of tissue on the side AC. This is what is going to lead to the dog ear. Now the sutures are taken. The point E is now sutured to the point A. It is important to avoid any tension on the flap. As I was talking to you about the dog ear that forms on the side AC because of discrepancy in size. This point of dog ear has been dealt with in detail in the video on transposition flaps. The flap inset is done.
Now the residual raw area which is formed after the raising of the flap otherwise known as a secondary defect is covered with a skin graft. I hope you like this video. If you have missed the first video on general classification of flaps and the introduction to local flaps, please click here. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel GK Hand Surgery to keep updated about the latest in learning hand surgery.